Interesting news out of Washington, an organization called the Congressional Workers Union has announced that they are ready to begin unionizing the offices of different congressmen and women. Now they're not technically a union, they're gonna sort of represent unionization efforts in the individual offices. It gets complicated and we'll get into it, but we wanna read a little bit of a statement that they put out saying, after more than a year of organizing as a volunteer group of congressional staff, we are proud to publicly announce our efforts to unionize the personal offices and committees of Congress in solidarity with our fellow workers across the United States and the world. And they say last month, a survey distributed by the Congressional Progressive Staff Association found that 91% of staff surveyed want more protections to give them a voice at work. Democrats have historically stood up for workers rights to to organize. Now it is time for Democrats to lead by example. I think they're being quite charitable in the middle of that statement there, but I get why they're doing it in terms of public relations. And in terms of that statement though, they seem to be alluding to one Democrat in particular. Take a look at this video yesterday of Nancy Pelosi. Do you support staffer attempts to unionize here in Congress? Well, we were just unionized at the DCCC and I supported that, yeah. Okay, so she apparently is on board, that's what she said and we can debate whether we believe that or not. But in addition, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez who has participated in support of multiple uh, labor movement strikes, things like that tweeted, on Capitol Hill interns are often unpaid, many staffers don't make a living wage, and lack of work protections can pave the way for unhealthy environments. So is there movement? Is this gonna happen? What do y'all think? Well, let me be clear here, because Nancy Pelosi didn't say she supported it. She said she supported a different unionization effort <laughs> that was purposely evasive. Uh, so that means she likely does not support it. Uh, so I don't know enough of the details to know, you know, you know, did they go to the Pelosi's of the world? Did they get a yes? Did they get a no? Did they not talk to them? I have no idea of the of the details of how it is proceeding. And I, I've got to say that uh, a lot of times uh, progressives are quicker to unionize. Um, but what I would love, and this is important, it, unionize the staff for all of the Democrats. Because if you just do it for the progressives who are already on your side, and you let the corporate Democrats not unionize, well, that's weird. No, it's got to be for all of the Democrats. So I I hope that they've got the strength to be able to do that. Adrian. Um, so I think that this is extremely smart and wise for them to unionize because the kind of work environments they're in cannot be healthy just by virtue of the fact that we know where there are work environments where there are significant disparities in power. Uh, also, you have these star players in terms of people who are uplifted and almost holier than thou. And people exploit their power, mm-hmm. they exploit other people. And we even saw that kind of during that Me Too movement period where some staffers did come forward and say, hey, the uh, essentially the reporting processes and procedures that they essentially, they silence you. And the fact that there isn't a great sense of transparency there and they had to push to move to make changes in that arena. It tells you there's a lot of bad stuff going on behind closed doors and it would be in the best interest of staffers to essentially be able to work collectively to fight against it. Definitely, yeah, the the difference in the power between them is obviously clear and that's been, I mean, how many scandals? in congressional offices can we think back on in the past few decades. But um, I did allude to it being uh, potentially difficult in some ways. So let me give you a little bit more details about that. Uh, this is according to reporting by Kayla Epstein at Business Insider. Should legislation make it to a full vote in the House and pass, the resolution also would activate the same kind of labor protections that apply to the rest of the public workforce. That means that staff who begin to discuss unionizing efforts in their workplaces have protections against retaliation. By the way, since it requires a full vote in the House, They're definitely gonna wanna do that relatively quickly, considering how things are looking for November. But then, with the way that the law is written, every congressional office and committee would have to independently organize for itself. That means that staffers in each of the 538 separate offices and dozens of committees would have to go through the process themselves. This could and likely would result in a situation where only half of Congress's offices unionize, with a split evident between Democrats and Republicans. Although even that is interesting because like there's no reason why the offices of Republicans wouldn't want the same protections, ability to negotiate for better conditions and pay. But since many of the people who go through this see this as a stepping stone to other positions in the party, 
even though they would know it is in their direct economic interest. And in terms of protections from exploitation and things like that, sexual harassment, all that. They might not want to organize just because they could get blacklisted from the party effectively. Yeah, so um, I have a prediction. Um, they are not going to vote quickly. They're going to try to run out the clock uh, and let the Republicans get in charge so that uh, they'll kill the effort. Uh, so I say that because one, they're corporate Democrats. They, they never mean anything they say. And so they've been saying they support unions for decades. They've never once passed any of those bills. Obama's, oh, I'm gonna do, oh my God, I'm gonna do it. Didn't do it. The Biden's, Pro Act. The Pro Act. Didn't even introduce it. It's just a joke. There's no chance of it passing in the Senate. They didn't even try. So will they unionize themselves? Mm, I would be borderline shocked. And on top of that, Pelosi saying, I supported a different effort. It means she doesn't support this effort. And she, of course not, she's like the queen of corporate rule. So she, they think unions are a, a, a joke and a punching bag. And oftentimes union leaders agree with them. So, so now if they actually unionize these guys, that would be a hell of a development. Um, and But I believe it when, they, when I see it. And yes, it partly because they just don't believe in unions, they're lying. They love corporate rule, that's 90% of the Democratic Party. The AOC means it, uh, the progressives mean it, right? Uh, and then finally, also because they like that power and they don't want to give it away. Yeah, there's been tons of abuse, including recently by people like Katie Hill, who slept with staffers. So, uh, you know, and yeah, she left Congress, but she's still beloved in Washington. I mean, there's fawning articles about how wonderful she is, right? And how brave she is. So you think that people like Katie Hill and the others, and mainly guys, but it happens to, in her case, I mean, a female congressperson too, are just gonna voluntarily go, oh yeah, yeah, you guys should check my power. If that's happening in Washington, I haven't seen it. So hmm. uh, good effort, I hope you win, good luck to you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agree. The fact is that Republicans don't dominate the field when it comes to being oppressors and wanting to have power. And so there are plenty of Democrats out there who also do not want to see their staff unionized. They still want to be able to um, to essentially have that ability to abuse their power uh, over them. And it's so absolutely disgusting. Uh, but you know what? I really do hope it does work out for the staffers because a lot of the things that they endure are completely unethical and moral, and they should not have those experiences. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. So really appreciate Appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.